Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, September 17th, 2012. I'd ask everyone to rise and join us in singing O Canada. National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio rendition. So we'll move into the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes and I see Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that we adopt the minutes of the City Council meeting held September 4th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Any errors or omissions that anybody caught? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you, and that motion carries. Uh, that brings us on to adoption of the agenda. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Gimmon. I'll move that uh, Council approve the adoption of the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Um, if I could, there is uh, one uh, addition. Uh, we have a notice of motion from Councillor McLean, uh, and so we'd add that, add that under notices of motion uh, regarding um, uh, the East Coast Garden Party. If we could. Okay, so the uh, agenda with that addition, Councillor Gustafson, that's okay? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, then we'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, that covers our standing items and brings us into delegations. So this is an opportunity for anybody to come forward to address Council on any community-related matter. We did have a notice that there was somebody that may have been coming, but I don't see anybody popping up out of the uh, out of the gallery. And so we'll close the delegation portion of our agenda and we'll uh, move through into public hearings of which we had none, unfinished business we had none, and uh, that takes us into reports. Item 8.1, Council Renumeration Review Committee. And I wonder if our uh, Assistant Deputy Legislative Services Manager <laughs> would uh, introduce this one for us, Audrey. Thank you, Mayor Given. You have attached to the agenda a report identifying a requested change to the terms of reference for the Council Remuneration Review Committee. There has been, uh, unfortunately, a resignation of one of the public members, and rather than attempt to seek and spend the time in trying to do that, an additional member in further discussion indicated that it would certainly work to have the review committee consist of three members of the public. So administration is changing, is recommending that the be a change in the terms of reference to the number of appointed public members from four to three. Thanks very much, Audrey. Thank you. So we have a recommendation for administration. Councillor Rice. I move that council accept the resignation of Ms. Madeline Hombert from the Council Remuneration Review Committee and further that council revise the terms of reference of the committee to change the number of appointed public members from four to three. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then we'll call for the vote. 
Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, I think we had a number of things under reports today. Item 8.2, Land Use Bylaw Amendment C 1100-182. Who from our administration team is going to handle it? Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Planning staff have received an application to amend the land use bylaw to change a number of lots in the Westgate East outline plan area to rezone the properties from RR restricted res residential to RL low density residential. At the time this item is presented for uh, public hearing, a corresponding change to the Westgate East outline plan will accompany it. And planning staff recommends that uh, land use bylaw amendment C1182 be given first reading and Monday, October 15th be set as the date, time, location for public hearing. Thanks very much, Mr. Johnson. So we have a recommendation from administration. Wouldn't a member of council care to make a motion so that we can set that public hearing? Thanks, Councillor Rice. I move that, I move first reading of bylaw, land use bylaw amendment C1100182. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. A motion for first reading. Uh, call for the vote. Oh. Thank you. And that motion carries, Councillor Rice. I move that Monday, October 15, 2012, at 6.30 p.m. be established as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, any discussion or debate on date, time, and location of that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. I think I'm looking for one more, Council. Thank you. And that motion carries. And that takes us to item 8.3, Meadowview Area Structure Plan. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Given. Planning staff have received an application to amend the, amend the Meadowview Area Structure Plan to change the designation of the PARD site from recreation to single family residential. Amendments to the Brookfield Outline Plan and Land Use Bylaw would be required prior to redevelopment of the site for residential purposes. And planning staff recommends that uh, Bylaw C 1083-06 be given first reading and established Monday, October 15th, 2012 in the City Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Johnson. A motion on that recommendation. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that the Meadowview Area Structure Plan Amendment Bylaw C-1083-06 be given first reading. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move that Council establish Monday, October 15th, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. in Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for Bylaw C-1083-06. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on date, time, and location in that public hearing? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And item 8.4, is this you again, Mr. Johnson? Thank you, Mayor Given. Planning staff have received an application to Proposed changes to the Center West Outline Plan and rezone the subject property from arterial commercial to general industrial. The property is located south of the Future Shop in the uh, Center West Outline Plan area. Um, planning staff recommends that Council give bylaw C1063-05 and land use bylaw amendment C1100-184 First reading and establish Monday, October 15th in Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing. Thanks very much, Mr. Johnson. A motion on that, Council. Councillor Mineral. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, the West Industrial Area Structure Plan Bylaw Amendment C 1063 05 be given first reading. Thanks very much, Councillor Mineral. Uh, call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Council Mineral. Thanks. I'll uh, for move that uh, land use bylaw amendment C 1100-184 uh, be given first reading. Thanks very much, Council Mineral. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Council Mineral. Yep. 
Uh, I'll move that uh, council establish Monday, October 15th, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for Bylaw C-1063-05 and Bylaw C-1100-184. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Any discussion as to date, time, and location for those public hearings? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. And that motion carries, and I think we have one last piece of uh, report business. Mr. Johnson. Thank you Mer very much, Mayor Given. Planning staff have received an application to change the land use designation of the subject property from mixed use focus to direct control in the South Avondale Area Redevelopment Plan and from mixed use to a direct control district in the land use bylaw. Uh, the purpose of the proposed amendments is to allow for the development of offices for the re relocation of the Gruard McClellan Catholic Diocese. Planning staff recommends that bylaws C 1202-A and C 1100-183 be given first readings and Monday, October 15th at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers be established as the daytime location for public hearing. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Council, I have uh, Councillor Rice. I move first reading of bylaw C1202A. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. I'll call for the vote on first reading. Thank you. That motion carries, Councillor Rice. I move first reading of bylaw C1100-183, the land use bylaw amendment. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. I'll call for the vote on first reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Rice, date, time, and location. I move that Council establish Monday, October 15, 2012, at 6.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers as the date, time, and location for public hearing purposes for Bylaw C-1202A and Bylaw C-1100-183. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any discussion or debate as to date, time, and location for those two public hearings? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries, and I believe that handles all of our report business, and that would take us into committee. And uh, Councillor Radburn, I believe you are acting for uh, our public work, last public works committee meeting. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move council receive the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held September 4th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Did anybody note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Okay. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn, was there anything that you wanted to highlight out of that set of Just, minutes? Yes, uh, thank you, Senator Mayor Given. Um, I guess three things. Just. Uh, we did discuss the South Montrose concourse design, provide some input, and it's coming back to committee tomorrow, actually. Um, we uh, received a letter from the Grand Prix Public School District uh, requesting to waive building permit fees for a health and wellness youth center to be uh, added to the Composite High School. We've asked the administration to bring back a report with, with respect to practice, our, pr our past practice in that regard. And we, uh, uh, okayed a discretionary use in a commercial transition district for a commercial recreation facility. Great. Thank thanks, you, Mayor Gibbon. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. That would take us to item 9.2, Community Development Committee, and Councillor Croken. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move Council receive the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting held September 4th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Croken. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did, did anyone note any errors or omissions? Councillor Monroe. Uh, thanks, uh, Mayor Given. Just a small spelling error in there, in particular with my last name and a couple of the motions. Uh, it's uh, under the uh, uh, the motion for uh, for the uh, addressing the uh, open space uh, master plan, parks and open space master plan. Uh, my name's spelled incorrectly there, and the motion to move in and out of camera. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Council Monroe. Thanks for that catch. Um, we'll make those amendments. Any other errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. I think I've got one more, Council. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Corbin. 
Thank you, Mayor Griffin. I move council approve the parks and open space master plan dated July 12, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any discussion or debate on the parks and open space master plan? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion is carried. The plan has been adopted. Councillor Crokin, was there anything else that you care cared to highlight in that meeting? Uh, I'll just uh, I'll, uh, touch on the 2012-2022 uh, Parks and Open Master uh, Space Master Plan. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things in there, Mr. Juniper has uh, advised us, and we and we talked about, they're going to be naming 100 parks in 2014. So they're presently right now picking out the sites and naming them and uh, I'm sure people are going to come forward that uh, have experience with the city like Councillor Rice would know a lot more of the parks and areas than uh, a number of us, <coughs> us newbies so uh, oh I'm sorry Mayor Given I, I don't know about that so they won't be one named after you then that's for sure I can even turn on my own microphone if you just want to ring in there, Councillor Councilor Rice. Go ahead. Is the criteria going to be on the city website? I it seems to me the policy is that it, it you can't be living to have something named after you. I'll Council maybe check with the, the, our director. Okay, Mr. Roth. The uh, parks and master parks and open space master plan does call for actually having a committee that would review the, the naming process. Mm. Uh, we would have to make sure that there. Are um, briefed and aware that I'm not exactly sure on whether they could be named after a person alive or not. Okay. I, I think, yeah, Councillor Rice, I think the uh, the general theme in the, the plan was to say that there should be a committee that should come up with the policy uh, and recommendations for Council on how to name our parks, or our open spaces. Yeah. So I'm sure if there's anything pre-existing, like you pointed out, the administration will find out for them. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Rice. Councillor Cogan, was there anything else you wanted to highlight there? Nope, that was it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Cogan. I think that takes us to 9.3, Environment Committee. Councillor Monroe. Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Environment Committee meeting held September 10th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Any uh, discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Did they spell the Chairman's name right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, seeing none, then I'll <laughs> call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Monroe. Uh, thanks again, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Council approve the Riparian Setback Matrix Model, or the RSMM. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Yeah, just to speak a little bit uh, about this, uh, I've got quite a few notes about it. However, I'll maybe just kind of gloss over it. Uh, it's um, uh, essentially this is uh, uh, the map. It, 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 <coughs> It does the mapping or provides mapping to the city on uh, all of our ecological uh, features associated with the wetlands, ponds, creeks, and uh, that is essentially what we would call a riparian area. Um, right now it is currently set at 15 meters uh, from top of bank. Uh, the, we had some consultants come in, they've done a lengthy review of uh, uh, how we should be doing this going forward and we've established that uh, going forward it'll be uh, anywhere between a 10 to 90 meter setback pending on uh, scientific evidence that identifies uh, the necessity of how far the setback should be from the riparian area. So it is, um, instead of having any, uh, I guess basically an arbitrary number such as 15 meters, this way we can have a look at it and make, a, I guess, an educated and informed decision as to how much setback should be uh, from any of these wetlands. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Um, discussion and debate, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I did have some issues in, uh, on this as well as the setback for the environmental mapping of the city and also from the 2012 22 Parks and Open Space Master Plan, where they say they'll have a 30 meter setback, and then we have another plan on the environment that says from 10 to 90 meters. So I'm really hoping the administration will get this down where it's going to be and how it's going to come about because you have two different studies that are kind of conflicting. Okay, further discussion and debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. 
And that motion carries. Councillor Monroe, I think you know, yep. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council proclaim, proclaim October 15th to the 21st, 2012 as Waste Reduction Week. Uh, once again, just to speak a little bit about this, uh, um, we're always trying to identify opportunities to uh, reduce our footprint on uh, the landfills. Right now, uh, you know, the goal is to get us down to uh, uh, a 25% reduction in uh, the going into the way into the landfills of waste going into the landfills and I think that uh, uh, by doing this proclamation it's just uh, uh, affirming our values that uh, th this is important to us and we want uh, we want uh, folks to follow up with that thanks very much councilman oh councillor rice will there be any other activities during that week uh, yes as a matter of fact there will um, just bear with me for two seconds councillor rice and I'll, I'm glad we share those with you <clears throat> Sorry, it took me a little bit to find it there. Sorry about that, Mary Given. Um, yeah, this year uh, there's going to be a waste reduction lunch challenge. Uh, the Environmental uh, Stewardship Stewardship Department is asking the business community uh, that has employees that are currently bringing their lunch to work to to encourage them to uh, uh, reduce the waste produced from the lunch, uh, i.e., using uh, recycled materials or uh, containers that are reusable. Um, participant participants. Uh, um, email pictures of the employee and their lunch to be entered to win a $200 gift certificate for Jeffrey's Cafe. Right. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Councillor Rice, does that satisfy your curiosity? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any further discussion on the uh, motion to make the proclamation? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Monroe, was there anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Um, sure, Mayor Given. Uh, just uh, a quick highlight here would have been on the uh, wrapping of the utility boxes. Um, as most of you are aware, we have wrapped uh, three of them uh, in the downtown core uh, earlier on this year, and uh, they've got very positive feedback so far. And it looks like our, uh, or it looks like administration is going to proceed to wrap some more uh, boxes in the next year here. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. So we'll move on to Protective Services Committee and Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move the Council receive the minutes of the Protective Services Committee meeting held September 11th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions? Councillor Radburn? Thank you, Mayor Given. Just a quick note that I, I did attend the meeting as an observer, so. Okay. Minutes could record that, please. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. We'll make sure to catch that. Any other errors or omissions? Seeing none, then we'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move that Council approve the emergency fire dispatch agreement between the City of Grand Prairie and Mackenzie County. And in speaking to that, Mayor Given, the City Fire Department currently provides 911 dispatch for a large portion of northwestern Alberta, and Mackenzie County is looking for someone to provide that service for them. Based on the formula, it will provide an additional uh, about $28,000 in revenue per year, escalating at 4% per year. Uh, staff believe they can handle the additional capacity and the call volumes, but they do plan to uh, cut it off at this point and monitor our uh, service levels and call volumes before adding any more additional municipalities. Right. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the motion to enter this agreement? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong, was there anything else that you wanted to highlight in that set of minutes? Yes, just for information, I wanted to let the uh, let Council know that the committee heard a presentation from the Office of Traffic Safety regarding the new provincial impaired driving legislation. Uh, it was really informative. Uh, they basically have increased the, uh, the, the, they've increased the legislation for, uh, starting September 1st, for people who are 
uh, blow between 0 0.05 and 0 0.08 um, for their blood alcohol levels. Uh, so everyone should get familiar with that because you know there there are uh, the increases include 72-hour mandatory uh, license suspensions and uh, vehicle impounding as opposed to the, the previous 24 hours. So it's really important that. Uh, that people get versed on that. There were also a couple motions that came out of uh, the accessible taxi um, discussion. One was to get a report back regarding the Disabled Transportation Society usage of the accessible taxi cab. And the other one was to uh, ask administration to provide a report on potential impacts for legislating the, the taxi cab industry that they be required to provide accessible taxis within their fleets. Um, this speaks to um, offering the same type of service for all types of people, whether they be able-bodied or disabled within our city, and that's going to be coming forward to future meetings, so keep your eye open for that. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, that takes us to the Pursuit of Excellence Committee, I believe. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I'd like to move that Council receive the minutes of the Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting held September 11, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor McLean, was there anything you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? You bet. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, just a couple individuals. Uh, Pat Gustafson uh, got a few dollars, uh, about 400, 200 for two different events. Uh, she must be pretty good at uh, pistol competition. There's uh, national championships in Calgary, and there's a spin summit in Vancouver. So I wish all the success. Uh, another one, Ryan Ronowski is on Team Canada for the Down Syndrome International Swimming Organization World Championships in Italy on November 5th, between November 15th and the 23rd, and received $1,000 from the Pursuit of Excellence. Uh, another one, Daniel Smith. Um, for women's volleyball, Canadian national team also received $1,000. And Nighthawk Alpine Ski Team for clinic hosting received $775. Okay. That's thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Monroe, did you have a question? Sure, thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, Councillor McLean, I just noticed in the minutes that there was some discussion in regards to the uh, funding grants, uh, et cetera, and I'm just wondering if you could maybe give a little bit more detail in regards to that. Councillor McLean? Uh, thank you, Councillor Monroe. Yes, uh, the, there was a few things discussed over the last Pursuit of Excellence Committee, and I'm looking forward to more reporters and everybody being there for the next one. They're actually going to bring more stuff to the next committee. I believe it's October 23rd. There was all stuff about grants or funding of how long, how the system started, uh, Pursuit of Excellence in 1995. There was $500,000, and City Grand Prairie's done an excellent job. They've given out quite a bit of dollars over a number of years. All that's coming to the next pursuit of excellence. And it was never meant to be an endowment fund. It was meant to be, um, endowment funds usually tend to be, they pay you if the interest makes the money. This pays way more than what the interest is making, but it's still like 360000 left of five hundred. The city's managed this quite incredibly. And the, just the people that get this money to go forward to participate in sports from all, and it's not just the city, it's the surrounding area. Quite a few, Beaver Lodge, Hythe, uh, Grovedale, it's all over. So the next committee will have a lot more on this. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Uh, if there was nothing else from Pursuit of Excellence, then that'd take us to General Government Services. Councillor Radburn. Gotcha. Good. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move Council uh, receive the minutes of the General Government Service Committee meeting held September 11th, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions that anybody noticed? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move Council adopt the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, FCM resolution on infrastructure amended with Grand Prairie specific infrastructure priorities. The resolution is attached. Um, this is the development. The resolution deals with the development of a new long term federal plan for municipal infrastructure funding. Uh, the Building Canada Plan and a number of important federal provincial trust transfer agreements vital to Canada's cities and communities will expire in, in March 2014. The rest of the uh, resolution speaks to that. Uh, it's localized or Grand Prairieized, so to speak, 
uh, in the middle where we have three whereases. Whereas Grand Prairie continues to be one of the fastest growing cities in, in the country as their population has grown an astounding 49% over the past 10 years and continues to grow at these rates. Whereas this rapid growth results in the need for over 20 million a year in new infrastructure in addition to the 16 million that is required to address the yearly depreciation of our tangible capital assets. And whereas Grand Prairie struggles to keep up with the expanding network of roads, bridges, sidewalks and other city amenities required to accommodate our rapidly expanding population. So this resolution, if passed, uh, will uh, be part of uh, FCM's advocacy efforts relative to this uh, new long-term federal plan. Um, they're working on it with uh, the federal partners and the federal ministry. So this will just add to, uh, I guess, that ad advocacy effort. Uh, the last, be it re uh, resolved, really talks about sending this uh, copy of this resolution to the Minister of Transport, Infra Infrastructure and Communities, to MP Chris Warkington, to the Alberta Minister of Municipal Affairs, to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and to the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association for their information. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion for the resolution? I see Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gim. To Councillor Radburn, our administration, this is very important on this on the SCM issue for this. Uh, it's going to be a lot of funding can be gone by 2014. Do we have anybody that's ever sat on council for the FCM for, on this or if they have a meeting a year or two that we are actually there and, and present on this for our issue? As the youngest city in Canada, we have a lot of issues. So does, can administration answer that? So are you speaking about um, um, I particularly know on this this or on FCM sort of has well, the city of Grand Prairie? Not the FCM. Grand Prairie goes to the FCM uh, conferences. But sometimes they're, as a council member, does anybody ever sat on with the FCM or on an issue on building fund where we, if they're having a meeting or two, that we are there present? Well, uh, I can speak to at least one part of that. Uh, over the years, the city of Grand Prairie has been represented uh, with different council members sitting at the uh, FCM uh, through their committees and on their board. Um, we don't currently. Um, the FCM and the federal, the federal government, I should say, through their consultation, has brought a consultation across the province or across Canada to a number of communities. Uh, the invite to those consultation, uh, those consultations were by invite only. Um, I believe the AUMA and Councillor Rice, I'm not sure if you could uh, sort of respond to part of that, but I believe the AUMA was represented at the Alberta uh, consultations and uh, if that was the case, then Councillor Rice obviously is on the AUMA, AUMA board. Councillor Rice, do you want to speak to that at all? On. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Steve Christie of the City of Lacombe represented mid-sized cities at the infrastructure meetings um, uh, last year and as well will be attending again in September to, to put forth the, uh, the need of, of mid-sized cities. Okay. So, yeah. is that no, I hope we will hear. question? Council yeah, Wong? I hope so. Okay. Councillor Wong? Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I'm really happy to see the Grand Prairie context be uh, written up the way it is. I think it's really important for uh, FCM to realize that that $111 billion infrastructure deficit, which always talks about crumbling infrastructure, doesn't necessarily apply to a lot of municipalities in the West that are fairly young communities that have young families and they, they really lack new infrastructure. And that's the infrastructure that attracts uh, people to their communities and professionals to their communities. So things like our multiplex and other recreational facilities, uh, things that uh, affect the arts and culture, we we just are missing funding for that component in our in our communities. And not you know the the resolution addresses not only the crumbling in infrastructure but the new growth. infrastructure as well. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Rice. I think uh, it, it's equally important that the case be made. Um, that any new programs do not emulate past programs where it has happened in the past it almost seemed that if you did not allow your infrastructure to deteriorate but you responsibly dealt with it as Grand Prairie did you were almost punished it was the people who let theirs deteriorate to the crumbling stage that received the money so I think it's really important to make that case that that this you know that this doesn't follow the patterns of the past. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Any further discussion or debate on the motion to adopt the uh, FCM resolution? Councillor Radburn? Thank you. Just, uh, yeah, I think uh, the resolution speaks to the comments uh, around the table. I appreciate uh, the support and, and the insight. Um, I guess the reality is they're working on it now so that 
the, the transition is seamless, so that there is something in place when the other programs end in 214. So I think it's important that that happen uh, like now, as soon as possible, so we know we can plan for the future. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Raverin. Uh, if there's no further discussion or debate, then I'll call for the vote. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That motion carries. I believe that handled all of our committee business. Uh, we had no items of correspondence. Uh, we had no delegations make their way here during the delegation portion of the agenda. Uh, we do have a notice of motion, though, filed by uh, Councillor McLean. Uh, the motion was uh, passed out to Council in uh, typewritten form, and so as with our notices of motion, uh, it's received here tonight, and then we'll uh, be up for discussion and debate uh, at our following Council meeting. And so the motion is... Um, Council Direct Administration to work with the event organizers of the East Coast Garden Party to obtain a park use permit under Parks and Recreation Areas Bylaw C-834 for 2013 and 2014 events to be held in South Bear Creek Park. Council McLean, is that the motion as you wanted to have it made? Yes, okay, thanks very much, Council McLean. So that notice of motion is recorded and that will come back at our next Council meeting for discussion and debate. Uh, that handles our business with notices of motion. And we'll move on to council member report. Now, council, I apologize, I didn't get a chance to poll you all to see if you had any reports. So is there anybody that has a report from an agency board or commission? Maybe I didn't get any response because nobody was nobody had anything to report. Councillor Rice, I should have known that you would be able to help me out. I uh, attended a utility consumers advocacy uh, board meeting. Uh, it is a steep learning curve, um, and I will be in October attending my first meeting as a member of the Energy Resources Conservation Board Chairman's Advisory Committee, so looking forward to that. Thanks. And looking forward to the AUMA convention. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice, for that AUMA report. Much appreciated. Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, I'd like to make a quick report on the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance. The Alliance is starting to uh, conduct their open houses, which which we hope to engage a large portion of the community. Uh, there's there's a lot of open houses happening in different areas across northwestern Alberta. Uh, tomorrow is Fairview. Um, I know that uh, we're going to be in Fox Creek, um, Paddle Prairie, uh, Beaver Lodge, uh, all, all sorts of areas. Anyway, uh, if you go to MightyPeaceWatershedAlliance.org, that's our website and it has the schedule of all the open houses. We really want to hear from the public in terms of what their issues are around the watershed. Um, there are, to give you an example of some of the issues that I've heard of, which I didn't even know were an issue. Um, first of all, the, uh, the Bennett Dam, when it was created, it actually solved a lot of flooding issues for a lot of small municipalities that were right downstream on the Peace River. Uh, there were towns that constantly flooded every year because of the ice jams that would happen in the Peace River. However, because of, the, you know, when, whenever you have something good that happens, there's also, it's also something on the flip side of that. And on the flip side of that, a lot of communities notice that the Peace River, because it doesn't get to as high a level, the water isn't as clear as it used to be 20 years ago. So um, it, uh, it, of course, starts to affect uh, aquatic wildlife in there and uh, it affects the ability for the bank to get property cleaned off. Uh, so you know these are the kind of issues that we want to hear. Uh, we want to know what what you think affects the river uh, or what you've witnessed because it's really difficult for a small group of stakeholders to be able to identify all the issues. So for those public open houses we'll have a short presentation and then we just invite the public to just provide comments. Great. Thanks very much Councillor Wong. Did anyone have any other? Uh, Councillor O'Toole, you had a couple? Yes, please. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I got uh, one report on the, uh, the uh, dinosaur initiative. And uh, just want to highlight a couple of things here. On August 10th, uh, we received a request from the Royal Canadian Geographical Society informing us that they will be having dinner with Dr. Curry on November 7th at the Canadian Museum of Civilization in Hall, Quebec, where they will be presenting him with their highest honor, the Gold Medal Award. This presentation will be made by Dan and Donna Aykroyd. Um, Norman Dick, a local uh, resident here in Grand Prairie, has donated a fossil that uh, will be examined today and tomorrow by Dr. Phil Curry. 
and it's a very instrumental uh, uh, discovery and it was just by chance that somebody uh, that Norman brought it in to have it analyzed and it is uh, uh, going to be donated to the uh, new Curry Museum. And also on September 8th, they had the third annual geocache that was helped at Pipestone Creek. And this was an exceptionally successful event, the number of people that turned out, and there was just under $1,000 raised. And uh, I also have, uh, we had our annual uh, Board of Directors general meeting, and uh, nothing really changed too much. Uh, we have a lot of announcements that will be coming out in the future, uh, but I want to let you know that I was appointed to the Governance and Human Resources Committee. Great. Thanks, Councillor Tool. You said you had a second report as well? I do. The library, uh, just to give you the heads up there, uh, I'm on part of the HR department there too, and we had a review of with the people looking for our new library uh, uh, director and uh, we're getting some positive feedbacks that uh, we're getting some excellent uh, people applying for the job. Um, let me just go through a couple things here. Uh, okay, uh, the library, uh, we hired a new person from Tumblr Ridge from their lot library and there's their new child children's services assistant uh, program coordinator and uh, the fellow's name is Jacob Fair and Jacob's settling really well and uh, he's a great and excellent uh, addition to the staff. A uh, couple more things here. There was a couple uh, preschool programs that will be offered on a weekly basis starting in September. One is called the Wiggle Waggle Fun and it's from three to five year olds and it will replace the imagination station that's held on Monday afternoons. This program will focus on stories and rhymes that encourage children to move around and be active. Uh, the other program is Tell Me Why and it's from three to four year olds and it will be offered on Thursday afternoons and it will be highlighted uh, the, the non-fiction collection with stories and activities based on concepts like colors, math and seasons. And uh, a new book by former children's librarian Linda Smith will be released in September and the Grand Prairie Lublick Library Public Library will be hosting a book launch for the Piper of Shenandoah in the Linda Smith Story Room on September 29th at 2 o'clock. And one other thing I would like to bring up is uh, we had 43 grade 1 to 3 students in our Reading Bubbles program where you have a partner that you read to and we had 34 volunteers that were pa paired up with these 43. So thank you very much. Great. Thanks very much, Council Tool. Uh, Councillor Rice, did you have a report or a question? I, I have a question. Yes, sure. Two, actually. Um, I missed what he was appointed to. The HR committee. Oh. The, for the, do you mean for the Dinosaur Museum? Yes. For the Dinosaur Museum? So uh, governance of the board of and Human Resources Committee. Okay, and I want to thank you for this booklet on the archives and... Uh, can you tell us a bit about the uh, uh, creative process uh, tea that's going to take place on Sunday, October 14th at the Golden Aid Center? There's some, uh, yes Council I can, Ms. Councillor Rice. Um, there will be a number of storytellers from the community, uh, people that have lived here and experienced a lot of uh, different events in their life, and it'll be just a... Uh, uh, non or an, a very casual storytelling uh, a day. I believe the Honorable Grant McEwen used to say, how can you build a future if you don't know your past? Absolutely. So keeping that in mind, I guess we just need to remind people that a membership to the archives is only $20 a person. Absolutely. And just one more, if you were looking at uh, coming to this event, every year it's packed. Uh, everybody that shows up, tell somebody the next year, so we end up going to a bigger venue. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Are there any further um, committee reports, agencies, boards, or commissions? Seeing none, then uh, maybe we'll start Council Roundtable. Councillor Rice, would you mind? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have nothing to report. Oh, well, that, that's a pretty quick start then. Councillor Monroe. Uh, thanks very much, Mayor Gibbon. 
Uh, September 5, I uh, attended the uh, ribbon cutting and opening of the Bee Diagnostic Center in uh, Beaver Lodge. Uh, this uh, center, it's a new laboratory under the management of the GPRC, uh, and it's located out at the uh, research farm. Um, in attendance there was the Honorable uh, uh, Lynn Yellick, I believe that's how you say her last name, Yellick, uh, Minister of State for Western Economic Diversification, and Chris Workington, our local MP for the Peace River area. And uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I mean, this, this project is a $2.2 million project, uh, and it's expected to perform about 1,500 dis diagnostic services on uh, the B uh, throughout the year. Uh, and. Uh, uh, they're quite detrimental to uh, uh, to any kind of crops throughout the country. So, uh, very important facility, uh, and uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, I guess rejuvenating the uh, uh, the uh, center out uh, out there, the Beaver Lodge Research Center. Uh, on the 11th, I attended the 9/11 uh, memorial service out at the uh, fire station with a number of other councillors. Uh, right after that, I also uh, attended the United Way's uh, fall campaign kickoff, uh, where they uh, made a lofty goal this year of, I believe it's $1.2 million to raise. So uh, uh, I think they'll be able to do it. It's, it's ambitious, but uh, uh, knowing this community, I, I'm sure they'll have no problem doing it. On the 12th, uh, I uh, attended the Alberta Health Services uh, Community Engagement uh, evening at uh, the Podolan Inn uh, and it was uh, good to, to see uh, some representatives from Alberta Health Services come and give us an update as to uh, the direction of, uh, of uh, the health services throughout the province. Uh, next morning I was up bright and early for the uh, morning mixer at uh, the Safety City. Uh, for those of you that haven't been to the Safety City in a while, it's, uh, it's really coming along over there. They've got quite a few neat things going on. So. Um, Lots of events going. Pardon me. New director uh, at Safety City. Yes, uh, they've got uh, Heather uh, Coney is the new director. Thank you. Um, attended some annexation meetings over the course of the last week, uh, and uh, then uh, on Thursday, it w or pardon me, Friday, this past Friday, it was the ribbon cutting of the new City on 99th building, uh, and once again, what a fantastic looking building. Um, you know they've done some some great renovations to it and uh, um, must be very proud to be there and then on Saturday I attended the uh, Community Foundation Gala and uh, just uh, had a lovely time at the Grand Prairie Inn thank you thanks very much Councillor Monroe Councillor Krogan thank you Mayor Given on September the 5th uh, I attended the Community Village uh, social purpose lunch and uh, a great talk on uh, the Emperor penguins about how they stick together to keep warm and uh, trade off the egg and uh, that just goes to show us we should all stick together. Maybe not that close. Uh, later on uh, that day I attended at 2 o'clock a development appeal. Happened to be a fairly long one but it was good. Then on September the uh, 7th I brought greetings on behalf of the Mayor and Council to the Sean Waldron Golf Tournament and a uh, great initiative from the family. Uh, Rob Smith told the story about uh, being resuscitated at uh, our at, at that time the multiplex and if it wouldn't have been for the fundraising of these uh, defibrillators he may not have been around to tell a story but it was very good on September the 11th at 1130 uh, we had the pursuit of excellence meeting and there was uh, a number three or four other things that we just our committee couldn't get to so uh, it was a very busy September the 11th. Uh, <coughs> September 14th uh, at noon again, I attended the grand opening and lunch. Lunch this time, not a launch. Uh, ribbon cutting uh, on the city on 99th. Janina Blackburn and Robert Carroll were great cooks. They uh, cooked up a, 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 a fabulous lunch. And then at 2 p.m. Uh, opened a number of tenders. That was it, uh, Mayor Bill. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Crogan. Mm -hmm. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor. Given I uh, attended a POE meeting, um, uh, ad hoc, ad hoc 100th anniversary homecoming uh, planning meeting for our party in 2014. Um, then I attended the uh, former ALCB, the former library, and the new crime prevention enforcement building here in ribbon cutting in Grand Prairie. Great, great new building, great uh, environment around there for 
the special things that crime prevention has to look after. And I bought my uh, storm season ticket since I'm not going to be watching any NHL by the looks of it. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, September 5th, Community Village Expo and Luncheon. And in the evening, I attended uh, the U of A Med Students Meet and Greet, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce at the uh, at, Cid at Center 2000. September 6th, Wild Rose Villas Awards, Afternoon Wine and Cheese. Uh, September 7th, I attended the Mel Knight Celebration of Community Service. I was able to bring greetings on behalf of Mayor Given, and I uh, was able to share some words myself as well, and thanks to uh, Councillor O'Toole, who joined me at that event. Uh, September 8th, uh, Parkinson Superwalk, a very successful uh, walk in terms of money raised and participation this year. September 10th, Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting. Actually, their main uh, agenda item was to review a draft of the industrial strategy, um, and that will be coming to Council Committee the whole here in the near future. September 11th, Alberta Health Community Engagement Reception, and September 12th, an Annexation City Committee, and then uh, again, along with uh, Councillor O'Toole, uh, I was a homeless count volunteer, and our work was uh, at the uh, at the Salvation Armory where we surveyed. Uh, a number of, uh, number of people who came for supper that night. Uh, I believe um, he said that there were 70 who came to the uh, to supper that day, and the four of us uh, were there to uh, help uh, and talk and spend some time with each of those who, who came to talk about their housing situation. And uh, September 13th was the city county annexation discussions, and I also attended the ribbon cutting of city on 99th. Thank you, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councillor Reverend, Councillor Tool. Um, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Before I uh, start doing my uh, roundtable, I'd just like to make a, a little <laughs> notice here, if I could. Sure. Um, local uh, pizza owner uh, Richard Ames of Daddio's Pizzeria was awarded the runner-up, which was third place in the Canadian Pizza Magazine's Chef of the Year contest. The contest is open to all Canadian restaurants that have pizza as at least 40% of their menu. Uh, just a little highlight here. The Poco Loco, the, which is a crazy chicken pizza, was the one that Daddio's menu that uh, Richard submitted and uh, was uh, um, st scored on that. So uh, Pete, Richard's been involved in the pizza industry at an international level and has been a guest presenter at International Pizza Expo held in Vegas. And uh, three of the major magazines that are involved in pizza are the Pizza Marketing Quarterly, the Pizza Today, and the Canadian Pizza have included a number of interviews with Richard over the nearly eight years he's been operating in Grand Prairie. And I just wanted to highlight him as a longtime resident of the city. Yeah, I guess you know how. Yeah. Okay. I'll just get on to my regular round table here. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> on September 5th, I also attended the Community Village on uh, a Social pr uh, Purpose Expo luncheon. Uh, and I, as mentioned, uh, John Croken, Councillor, and Councillor Lauren Ro uh, Ryburn were <laughs> also there. On the 7th, I attended the Mel Knight Retirement Supper at the Centre 2000. It was a well-attended event with many great stories told from many people from all over the province. Uh, thanks to Lauren Radburn for his tales of dealing with Mel Knight when he was the superintendent of the public school system in Grand Prairie. On the 11th, there was many, many events to be held on this day, and uh, we had to pick and choose. I attended the United Way kickoff luncheon. It was held at the GP Inn, and I wanna, it was the first time I was there since their new renovations, and compliments to the Pomeroy Group for the renovations of the building, and congratulations to those of the United Way and those that support both private and businesses. I uh, Also, I attended the library board later that night. I gave you my report earlier. And uh, later than I attended, the, the Wapiti Shooters Club had an AGM that night as well. So it was a long day. On the 12th, I attended the Philip J. Curry AGM. Mentioned I was appointed as the Human Resources Committee in Governance. On the 13th, uh, Lauren Radburn and myself were at the, uh, did the survey at the homeless count, and our position was to be at the, uh, the soup kitchen. And Kathy Shepard and Donalda Lang were our... Uh, Supervisors, you might say, and uh, I got to tell you, there was some sad stories there um, that we 
listened to when we had to do the survey and uh, it was a very interesting and I, uh, was, I was honored to be there to do that job. Uh, on the 14th, I showed up at the new building on City of 99th with many departments will be located there, including bylaw enforcement and youth intervention and crime prevention. So uh, I'd like to thank all those that uh, worked work at that building and all those that uh, worked on it to get it the way it is. It looks very nice. Uh, on the 15th, I attended the, uh, the Wayne Drysdale Friend Razor. It was an event that was held at the Wapiti Shooters Club, so kind of had to be there. And the many local attendees and uh, one individual, uh, Minister Jeff Johnson, the education minister, was also there. Um, on the 16th, Catherine and myself attended the 10th annual gala and auction for the Community Foundation. And I was guests of the, uh, the uh, Edmonton International Airport. Uh, and I want to thank them for uh, uh, letting us attend on their behalf. And also thanks to uh, the Chair, Leonard Sharback and Tracy Vavrick, Executive Director, the Board of Directors, the Rotary for being wine servers, the GPRC Woes, the athletes for being the uh, attendees, and the ATB for being the hosts and hostesses. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Tool. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, on September 5th, 6th, and 7th, I attended uh, in Fort Murray the Alberta Recycling Conference with uh, Councillor Wong. Uh, first time I've been there since 88, so there's been quite a few changes. And in 88, I played rugby and I don't remember much from 88 in that day but uh, long bus ride and long bus ride home. So there was a couple things spoken on the event was uh, one called SALT, Sustainable Arabic Landfill Technology. Uh, basically drill two inch holes every 20 meters apart and put air into the old landfill and pretty well dry it up so they get rid of leaching and things like that. So I thought that was very interesting. They're actually doing it in Fort Murray. Um, there was probably 16 landfills in the states that they're doing and they say it will generate 1.2 million to 1.5 million offsets at the Fort Murray landfill for points. Um, as well, uh, with this as well, I asked last year in Banff at the other conference about remining old landfills and oh no, we're not even close to that and, we, and they're actually going to probably remine or take one third of this old landfill back out and put it back to bed originally. So South Bear Creek, you never know, population doubles in 20 years, 30 years, the land may be used for something else. Um, as well, I, uh, while I was there, I attended the McDonald Island Park, uh, Suncor Community Leisure Center. It's quite a very nice, uh, beautiful facility. And from what I heard from the locals in Fort Murray, they were very glad when it opened, just like here, the East Link Center, and it's well used. Uh, another one I attended as well is the Oil Sand Discovery Center, a must-see if you go to Fort Murray, and it goes back from time from when they first started and to now. Uh, another, we also, the big one for me was a uh, tour of the Suncor facility. There was, um, got a picture with uh, the biggest dump truck in the world, 430-ton payload. I thought that was pretty impressive. I got a picture with Councillor Wong by, I believe, a five-ton tire. I look forward to getting that developed. And what got me was a few things, was uh, they produce in that one plant 300 to 350,000 barrels of oil a day. And then we also watched a video on reclamation, their one main site before there where they mined it and they had tailing ponds and it's been re reclaimed. They're still working to get certified. And when that happens, um, they're actually the individuals that started mining it, a lot of them are still working there. And they're quite proud from originally mining it, tail ponds to reclaiming it. So quite proud. And we were basically walking on a trail path there, and they're still in stages of it. So in 10 or 20 years, there's going to be a lot more uh, things on that land that they mined. And it looks really good. Uh, another one I have to say on this is uh, Aquaterra was there. Tim Conrad of uh, Aquaterra did a, a presentation on the styrofoam of melting it down system we have. Uh, I believe it was over 20 buses, he said, that has been, you could have filled up 20 school buses, big school buses, melted them down, and it's basically like eight refrigerators. So that's been taken out of the landfill. So good job on Tim. September 11th as well as uh, Councilor Croken was saying in pursuit of excellence committee, and I'm looking forward to the next one on October 23rd. 
and uh, just how well the pursuit of excellence is done and the city has managed the funds and, and for, for students and athletes. And I, I want to get the name right, but uh, the individual, I want, uh, there, there was a bronze medal take one, do one by uh, Conrad, I believe. I got to get this right, but they, I don't know if it's been in the paper, local papers here, but he won a bronze medal in seniors over 50 in world championships. And there was some money, five of them went over there. Uh, September 12th, uh, also attended a function at Bethany Inn, uh, as Council Monroe was saying, the Alberta Health Services Board. CEO Dr. Chris Eagle was there. He was talking about a few issues about local. A lot of local issues have been taken away, and we noticed that uh, in the last election and different people talking that actually Northwest, we need, we like to have a lot more input on stuff that happens here. And as well, we talked about the new hospital gelling with the Health and Education Center. So working with the college to make it work and about an EMS ambulance, another maybe kickoff area of four or five bay. So that was brought up and by other counselors there. So hopefully they will gel it and get it. So as well as September 13th, I attended the, with my wife, Tina, Habitat for Humanity, barbecue at Rainbow Automotive. Um, one thing I found interesting, they've joined up with Edmonton. So their committees are working together and so kind of that was news to me and we'll see how that goes. I'm sure joining up at Empton is going to be a lot bigger footprint and we might be able to do more. Um, also, uh, on September 14th, I went to a funeral and I want to bring this one up to a fellow named Kenneth Albert O'Flaherty. Uh, his family moved here when he was 15 years old. He graduated from St. Joseph High School in 1967. Uh, he died at 62 September 8th. He was a, a pretty good pillar in the St. Joseph's Paris for volunteer work. His time in many organizations included Voice for Life, Hospital Auxiliary, Kool-Aid, the Food Bank, within St. Joseph's Community, Knights of Columbus, RCIA, Altar Service, and as an usher. And where I got to know him really well, was four years ushering, was um, they were moving from the old parish to the new parish, uh, congregation with uh, our Archbishop Gerard Petipa's grace. And there was about 16 or 1700 people. This is our first mass, so we were pretty excited. And the doors were locked because our, His Grace had the key to get in. But the key wasn't working. <laughs> so it was about the second time he tried to get into the new, uh, new church. And I was told by Ken, open the door. Open the door. <laughs> so in the, in the church, you got to open the door. And then there's, there's the hallway and then another set of doors. So we opened it and everybody came in. But um, he's going to be missed by a lot of people. He's strong in the community. One of those individuals you didn't hear much about. But if you went to the Catholic Church, you, you knew Ken. Uh, he, he was dedicated, kind, and a real gentleman. I'm going to miss him a lot. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, as Councillor McLean already mentioned, I was at the recycling conference in Fort McMurray put on by Alberta Care. Uh, I just want to add a couple of uh, pieces of information to Councillor McLean's uh, report. Uh, first of all, I thought the most impressive thing was the, the tour of Suncor and their oil sands operation. It's really uh, impressive that they bus 5,000 employees to the site every day and bus them all back to the town or to the city I should say. Uh, we did get our picture taken next to those gigantic tires and I think you stand up to about uh, maybe halfway up those tires. Uh, typical dump truck out there, uh, well first of all typical drunk dump truck that you would see working on our city roads would haul anywhere between 20 and maybe even a hundred tons worth of material. These dump trucks haul 400 tons, so they're they're absolutely massive. The driver, one of the drivers, had commented that it's like uh, if you live in a bi level, going up to the top level, sitting on your bed and driving your house around. <laughs> that's that's what it felt like. Anyway, uh, equally impressive was the uh, re the reclamation area. It's called the Wapasu Lookout Area, and when it's complete, it's going to be 220 hectares of natural area with a small wetland in the center of it. Uh, Fort McMurray itself is trying to be a, a leader in environmental initiatives. They have banned plastic bags in their city and it was embraced by their community, which was very surprising to me. Uh, both Councillor McLean and myself had experienced walking down to the store and realizing that you can buy all this stuff, but you don't get a plastic bag to carry it back in, so you do have to buy a bag. But uh, it, at first I was a little bummed out, then I realized, well, I'm, I'm there to buy junk food, so maybe that will curtail my junk food buying habits. Uh, the other thing that uh, 
that they were looking at doing was they, they have zoned an industrial park that requires that every development within that industrial park be LEED Gold certified, which I thought was you know quite a high standard, and it seems to be developing like crazy out there. Uh, their demographics are very similar to what you would see in Grand Prairie. Uh, Population-wise, in the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo, is very similar to Grand Prairie, uh, if you include the donut area with the county, right around 76,000 people. The difference between them and us is that they have about 40,000 people that work in camps in the immediate area, and they use those people come back to Fort McMurray to Fort McMurray to use their services. So I thought this this was an excellent conference, and it, the visit itself provided a really worthwhile look at the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo in the context of being one of the major resource areas in Alberta, second to Grand Prairie. Uh, no, really enjoyed it, and I, I really encourage anyone who gets a chance to go out there, you definitely have to see the operations. Uh, continuing on with my report, on September 10th, I attended the Federal Electoral Boundary Open House. I. Uh, I watched Mayor Given and other people make their presentations to the Commission. Uh, it's interesting that Alberta is going to receive six additional seats in Parliament because of our population increase over the past 10 years. Uh, the real interesting thing is that in northern Alberta there used to only be two ridings, um, or there currently is two ridings and they're proposing a third one. So that makes up approximately 60 percent of Alberta's land mass and you know we get three out of well, I, I can't remember how many seats there are, but uh, you know, there were, there were a lot down south, we'll just say. Uh, September 11th, I attended the uh, Remembrance, of Fallen, Remembrance of Fallen Fighter Firefighter Ceremony at the South Fire Hall. September 12th, I was at the Alberta Health Services Community Engagement. Uh, September 14th, the ribbon cutting for City on 99th. And September 16th, I was at the Terry Fox Run, uh, where the mayor made a presentation on behalf of City Council. Uh, I just wanted to remind people that it's not too late to donate to the Terry Fox Foundation in support of cancer research. You can make your donation online at terryfox.org or you can go to the CIBC and they'll still accept your money. Thanks. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Um, on Wednesday the 5th, I uh, also attended the Social Purpose Expo held at the Community Village and uh, later that day um, had a meeting on this citizen engagement framework that it will be coming from the city of Grand Prairie soon. Um, on Saturday, September 8th, I brought greetings uh, to the, and the ribbon cutting for the Parkinson Superwalk, which was a fantastic event, very well attended on a beautiful Saturday morning down in Muskie Park. Um, I, excuse me, on September 10th, I attended the Boundary Commission uh, presentations, as Councillor Wong mentioned, uh, was really struck by how many of the other presentations there uh, were more or less the same as the City of Grand Prairie position, um, essentially saying that the, our, the proposed boundary needed to go a little bit further to the east. Um, basically everybody suggested that it should go down to Grand Cache and that it, uh, many suggested that it should not go as far north as it did in the proposed. So um, it was good to see that the City of Grand Prairie and a number of the residents and organizations that presented were uh, in alignment there. On September 11th, I also attended at the uh, South Fire Hall for the uh, remembrance of firefighters uh, uh, lost in the line of duty. Um, on Thursday, September 13th, uh, had an annexation team meeting and on the 14th a meeting with the uh, city and county annexation committees and then later that day attended the ribbon cutting for the city on 99th grand opening. On Saturday the 15th I attended at the Grand Prairie Christian School for the kickoff of the uh, inaugural season of the Philippine, Filipino Basketball Association. Uh, this new association has started up with six teams and they're going to run a full schedule of, uh, of a league over the course of uh, weekends. Um, talking to some of the organizers, they said that they had to cap it at six teams. Uh, they believe that uh, in coming years they'll have more teams uh, enter and likely some teams traveling from other communities like Fairview and Peace River Dawson to come down and play in the league. So it was great to see um, that opportunity for people to stay active and healthy in our community but also uh, to make some friendships. Uh, it was great to see the, 
them getting organized to do that. Later that evening, uh, I was also at the Community Foundation uh, Inspire Invest Forever Gala. And uh, again, congratulations to all the uh, Community Foundation volunteers and organizers who put that on. And thank you very much to everybody who came out to support the Community Foundation. Um, on Sunday, September 2nd, excuse me, Sunday, September 16th, I was there, as Councillor Wong mentioned, to address the participants for the Terry Fox Run. It was great to see everybody out uh, once again on a beautiful Sunday morning. And um, earlier today, I attended at uh, Swanhaven School to help celebrate the 75th anniversary of the uh, AMA's uh, school patrollers. Uh, I had a chance to uh, play a little bit of uh, floor hockey with some of the school patrollers, uh, let them all have a shot on the mayor in net, and I'd say that I was probably about 50-50. Uh, those grade five and six kids, some of them have quite the slap shot, uh, so I wasn't able to stop everything that went by, but it was great to be able to uh, celebrate with some kids uh, who are doing their bit for their classmates uh, at the same school that I actually attended and, and was a school patroller. And uh, that's all I had to record, and if that was everything, then we'll call our meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.